So here we go. I've shared my screen, so hopefully you can all see. So this is just an introduction to OpenShot, and hopefully it will be helpful in the future if you ever need to put a video together quickly in some easy editing software. So uh, prior to this tutorial, we have sent out um, a little file case of video files and audio files if you wanted to follow along, but I just have them right here in a little video assets folder. So first, when you're starting a project, you can easily just highlight, click and drag all of your files that you'll be using into this project files section, or you can click on this little green plus button and it will also open your files that you have on your computer if you wanna import them that way. So once you have your files inside your project, you can start to put them into your timeline. So the timeline is what will actually show up on this little preview screen here. So this is what you'll see when you're exporting the video. Everything will show up in what is here will show up when you export. So the first thing to do when we're going through the tracks is OpenShot opens with about five track spaces. I like to put my video track that I'm working on on track two because I can put any audio underneath. That's just the way that I like to edit with. And any video that you will put on top of this tracks video will show up on the screen instead of this. So you just have to be aware when you're layering your files of what will appear on the screen. So at the beginning of this video, I'm just going to scrub through it. You can scrub through by just clicking and holding and dragging the little timeline. And that will just give you a fast forward glance of what's going on. If you don't want to just sit there and take 20 minutes to watch the entire video first, it's a much faster way to get through and see what important things you'll actually need in your video. And this will depend on whoever your professor or supervisor is asking you where they want to cut things, what information is vital and important to the viewer. So for the purposes of this video, looking at the beginning, not really seeing a lot of action going on. So I'm gonna say the first important action that I see is when the materials for the painting start to be put out. So since right about here is where she's first putting out the bowl, I wanna mark this spot so I can come back to it later and know that it was important. So this little tool right here is the marker. And so when I click on that, it'll add this little blue tiny marker right here, if you can see that. So now I'm gonna scrub through a bit more until she's finished putting out the materials. Okay, I think that's the end of my important section. So I'm gonna add another marker, just so I know that in this section, there's important actions that happen. So the next action on screen is showing the paint. Okay, so now I'm gonna add just a, one more marker just to say that was an important action that happened in between here. And now when I go through a bit more, she's mixing her paint, mixing her paint. Okay, this mixing paint seems to be going on for a little while. So I'm gonna add a marker here and say, this is the end of where I want to show mixing paint since it's really just one action and the viewers aren't really gonna get much more information out of continuing to watch paint being mixed for a few more minutes. So now I'm just going to fast forward until I see a new sort of interesting um, action being displayed on the screen. So right about here, we can see now she's using a palette knife. So for example, if your supervisor was asking you to compare mixing paint with a plastic knife versus a palette knife, then this would be a good area to start showing a new action. So now I'm gonna put a marker there until the end of when I think um, it's useful to see this clip. So maybe a little bit more, and right about there is probably a good spot to end it. So now, as you can see, you can scroll through the timeline here, but if this seems like a little too much and you wanna see everything in one place, you can use this bar here to zoom in and out of your timeline. So if I want to zoom out, now I can see the whole clip all together if I'm going all the way to the end and back. But as you can see, the timeline, the markers are a bit overlapping. I can't really see as well. So I want to zoom in here just so I can see what's happening between those markers. So I can get a little bit more zoomed in on the timing. So now we're going to go back to the beginning of the video. And we remember that nothing really important happened here. But how do we separate this from what's happening next? So what I like to do is take the little scissor tool over here and it shows you almost a little X-Acto knife image. And once you click on that part of the screen, then it cuts these two clips apart. Now I wanna give it a cut at each of the places where I put the little marker and a really easy way to go back and forth between them is these little tools. So this will actually help you jump to the next marker. So our little scissor tool is highlighted. So that means everything we do now is using the scissor tool. So I can just keep hopping from marker to marker and just keep cutting where I want. 
So I'll cut here, all the way over here, and then to our last marker here. Okay, so now that I have everything I want separated, I wanna make sure I'm not using the cutter tool anymore. So now I have the little four arrows that will help me move things around. So since I know I don't want any of this beginning part of the video, I can just click on it and I'm gonna press the delete button on my computer. It could be seen as the backspace on your computer. And now I'm going to drag everything to the beginning of the clip so that everything just goes nicely together. So I'll bring it all back this way. And then if we can remember from before this clip where she was mixing the paint, we didn't really want to have um, this extra time where she was mixing it. So there we can delete as well. And another way you can actually delete the clip is if you right click and then press this remove clip button, that will also get rid of it too. And then bring this back here. Um, and then we also didn't want the rest of the video. So I'm just gonna hit the delete button to get rid of that as well. Now you can see our little markers are all kind of left up here. And to make sure we don't get things confused later on, or if we're gonna use new markers or the skip tools, to get rid of them, you just right click on them and then remove markers for each of them. Here we go. These last two here. There we go. And now our timeline is clear if we want to reuse any new markers. So now that I have all of the little clips that I want, I still think this section where we're watching the paint mix, if I just play the clip, it goes on for quite a while. And I don't think that people need to watch the paint being mixed this long to really get the idea of what I'm trying to put across. So if I right click on this, I have this whole little menu here. And if we go to time, we can actually speed up or slow down any of the clips that we want to use. And the backwards underneath where it says forward actually means in reverse. So you can even have that capability if that's something you're looking for. So in terms of fast forward, I like to stick to times two or times four is really all you need. But if you want to have an extra long video that you really think you can squeeze into a time saver 16, feel free to give it a try. So I'm just gonna do times four. And as you can see, that's much smaller, much nicer, especially if you're doing a social media type video and you need to fit it within a certain parameters, that's gonna be really helpful to shorten your video as a whole while still getting your message across. So now we've seen our beginning clip. Um, we have our fast forwarded scene. So when I play it, it'll look like this. You can still see the movements clearly. It's just happening a little bit faster. And then another thing you might want to add into all of this is transitions between the clips or at the beginning of the video. So if I wanted to kind of fade into the video and give that nice effect, just right clicking again, and we have the fade option, start of clip. You can do it at the end of the clip as well, or you could have it throughout the clip. So for start of the clip, I'm gonna put fade in slow just so we can see it a little bit better. And now you can see when I press my space bar to play it, it just fades right in. You can press your space bar or you can press this little green arrow to play the video as well. So now that we have that fade in effect, we can put that at any of these videos, even though they're in between, um, but I just showed it on the first one. But if you want to add any extra fancy transitions, you can actually go where, where it says project files to transitions here. And you have a lot of options that feel free to scroll through. There's some really funky ones too, if you want to give them a try. But I'll just show this one for now, circle in to out. So if I want to use it, I just click it and drag it down to my video. The X should be crossing over the little divide right here. And you can also shorten it or make it longer depending on how long you want the transition to last. And then that will add some cool transitions to the middle of your video. So I'm just gonna delete it right now just to help us see things clear. And you can right click on it and then press remove transitions or you can hit the delete or the backspace button as well to help delete it. So now that we've seen kind of all the transitions and fun things that we can do with the video, we might wanna add some text just to help describe what's going on or if you need a title at the beginning. So to do that, we go to the top of the screen and go to title and this little window will pop up. It has pretty much all the options that you'll be able to use within OpenShot to put text on the screen. And here you have a little bar where you can change everything that says. So for this one, I'm gonna say mixing paint because that's what is happening in our video. I don't have a subtitle, so I can just get rid of this and it'll disappear. I also have the ability to change to the font to anything I want. And there's also the ability to change the color of the text to help it stand out better on screen. So I'm just gonna make it something really bright so it stands out. Okay, so now that we have all of this, 
The background color doesn't really matter unless you're having the text by itself in which the background color you'll see behind the text. Otherwise, if you put it over top of a video, you'll just see the video in the background. So I'm going to save all this. And once you hit save, it doesn't appear right in your timeline, but when you're in project files, it will actually appear here. So I wanna put it on a track that's above the video to make sure that it's showing on top of the video. So I'm gonna just put it right here so we can see it. You can adjust the time to anything you want just by clicking and dragging the sides. But the only thing with text in OpenShot is once you've made the text into the settings, I can't now change the mixing paint to be a different font or a different color. You'd have to start again with the process and then drag your new um, text into your timeline. But now we have some text, we have a fade in effect, we have our clips we want, they're speeded up. Now I'm gonna take this video, which I pre-recorded earlier, which gives a short introduction to what's going on in the rest of the video. And as you can see, if I go over top of it, you're only going to see this video. You're not gonna see the mixing paint underneath since I've layered it on top in the timeline. But what I really want from this video is just the audio. I don't really care about the image. So I'm going to right click that and go to separate audio into single clip. And then underneath now you can see I have the audio from this above video. This is really helpful if you're even editing a really long video and say there's a dog barking in the background while you're talking. If you want, you can separate these two, cut apart with the scissors, the audio, and just delete the portion with the dog barking and you can keep a continuous video and have the audio that you want kept in the background while getting rid of anything you don't really need. So now that I just have the audio and I don't want the video anymore, I'm just gonna press the delete or the backspace to get rid of that. And now I'm going to drag the audio just below the videos. You don't have to have it below, this is just the way that I like to have my workspace laid out. But now I have it at the beginning of the video. So if I drag my timeline to the beginning and press play, I have that short little clip of me introducing the video. So now that we have that in, I'm gonna show you one more way to introduce sound into your videos. So for this video, there's no audio for the rest of it. So to make it a little bit more interesting, I just pulled a royalty-free clip of music from YouTube. YouTube Audio Library has a great, is a great resource to find these kinds of music. And I'm just throwing it into where I'm keeping all the audio that I have in my timeline. You can also layer your audio. Um, it won't be the one on top only comes in. I believe all the audio will play. But in this case, I just have the audio. So if I wanted to make any changes to it, I can give it a right click and go to volume. And I can have it fade in at the beginning, I can have it fade out at the end, or you can change the volume for the entire clip, have it only at a lesser volume if you have someone else talking and you don't want that to overpower them. So you have a lot of options when it comes to the volume and you can choose pretty much any of these and it will still allow the audio to play. Um, I believe that's pretty much everything that you can get done in OpenShot. So now I'm just gonna show you how you would export and give a few little tips on exporting. Oh, last thing. On the effects panel, if you go here, you can add some really funky event effects to any of the video clips that you want. Feel free to explore these. I haven't used too many of them, but I think they are more for fun um, than giving it a professional final look. So back to exporting, if you want to export, you can just click on this little red button right here and you'll have this pop-up. You can name your project, whatever you want the file to show up as here. And then one thing to always make sure of is this folder path. This is where your final file will save. And I find that the default is usually very difficult to find on your computer. So if you go to browse, this will be everything on your laptop. I like to save it to my desktop just so I can see it right there on my desktop when it's done. And then I can put it into any file that I want from there. But you can also just put it directly into the file you want on your computer. As long as you remember where it is, that's the most important. So, and from there you have a few more options on how you wanna save it as. When you first open it, there seems to be a lot, but it's not too complicated. So I'm just gonna take you into a quick presentation of what the files mean. <laughs> okay, so here we have some of the file types for exports that are available in OpenShot. 
Uh, just a small disclaimer for Learn, it's usually best if you upload via another site. So if you have a YouTube link, it's usually easier to play as Learn doesn't take too big of file sizes. So for your OpenShot options, there's two sections of the profile that you can go into that will be helpful to you. So there's the all formats and web. For the all formats, almost all of these are available to be compatible with Learn except for that FLV one right there. Everything else is pretty much compatible. They are just slightly different depending on what you're looking for. And in terms of the web ones, you'll really only ever need the Vimeo HD or the YouTube HD options from this panel. So why you would want to use those two is if you're uploading directly to those platforms, they're going to give you the best video quality overall which is always nice to have, but they might be a bit larger in file size, so taking a little bit longer to export. But if quality is something that you're really looking for, then I would say this is worth it. And in terms of the other formats that you have available, all of them are slightly different um, and have a few different things to offer. But in terms of what we're uploading to learn, if you're doing lessons or anything, just simple videos for teaching purposes, I'd say your best bet is probably the MP4 type videos. I have this presentation linked in the document that was sent to everyone. So if you want to read up on these more later, you definitely can go ahead. And just one last thing is in the video profile section, we saw all that list of options that came up. Uh, it looks a little bit like gibberish, but I promise they all have a bit of meaning. The HD section just means high definition, and this is usually in a widescreen, so your normal video format on your laptop. And if you see HDV, that just means vertical, so this would be if you're posting to an Instagram video, then this would be an important difference. And in terms of this number right here, it's just a video quality indicator. If you're on YouTube a lot, there's usually 720p and 1080p, 1080p just being a bit higher in quality, but 720p will usually also do you fine and is just better if you're looking for a smaller file size. Right here, we have just the frame rate of the video. 24 frames per second is industry average, but if you wanted something a little higher in quality, if you have a lot of slow motions in your video or some fast motions, you may want to have a bit of a higher frame rate, such as 25 or 26 frames per second. And then lastly, this section over here, it's just the dimensions of the video, um, how it'll pop up and what frame size on the computer that's watching it. And that's all for the sizes there. And back to this, you can just choose whatever option fits you best, export, and then this bar will just show you as it's loading and the final video should show up in your file wherever you saved it. And I think that's everything for me.